In this video, I'll show you how to add contacts into the phone book of these three fax machines. I'll do the demo on one of them, but the same idea will follow through for all three. The phone book in WinFax, let me actually fire this up first and I'll show you the phone book feature. Okay, let me start up WinFax Manager. I'll maximize this. WinFax have a phone book um, that we typically use to actually send out faxes to the 5,000 schools in, um, in Ontario. Now, it doesn't mean uh, we actually have just schools within the system. We can add as many contacts as we want within this, fa um, this phone book. And I'll actually go through with the structure in quite a bit uh, in a couple of minutes so you can actually see how this works. Um, let's first start by actually creating some folders in here, actually create a bit of a structure to add the contacts in. What we'd like to do, usually we actually, on each day, we send out um, a set of contacts. So to actually simplify this, I'm gonna create folders um, for each day of the week that's gonna contain contacts that's gonna get faxed on a particular day. So start by creating a new folder. I'll call this, this one Monday. I'll create another one, call it Tuesday. Another call Wednesday. Another one called Thursday. And the last one called Friday. Now the type of information I can import in here um, is a comma separated file. Now WinFax also support DBS2 and TextWorks and uh, other different type of file, but the common one that we'll be able to use is an actual text file that's going to be tab separated or tab delimited. I don't have the files as yet, so we'll come back to this step in a bit. Let me just minimize this window. The fax contacts are located under file store and file store. This link that is presented on each one of these computers within our network. Go to contacts and select fax list and open the fax list Excel file. Earlier I said we had three fax machines. Now, this list, the first sheet on this list is the master list. It contains all, oopsie, it contains all of the, of the contacts, all 5,000 contacts that we actually sent uh, faxes to. So just a little more than 5,000, we have 5,605 contacts in this list. On each machine here, these tabs represent in machine, machine one on Monday, these are the contacts that will be sent. And this is just a section of contacts selected from the master list. On Tuesday for machine one and so forth, and for machine two, there is a set of contacts for Monday and so forth. And then here is machine three set of contacts. Now, if somebody call and ask you if they want to be removed from the fax list, this is the list that you'll come and delete the contact from. So whenever we're ready to update the fax on a weekly basis, that fax list, we'll know there is one place on the network that has the most up-to-date list with the contacts that do want to have or do want to receive faxes. Okay, so we need to save this in a format that we can actually import in that phone book in a WinFax system. So start by you can actually press Control A and it's gonna select the rows and the columns with data. So you can go through and you can verify that. Yes, just the rows and columns are selected right now. You wanna copy that information, create a new Excel file. You wanna paste that information in there. Go to File, Save As. Put this file in a location that might be easy to access through the network. Um, I have a personal folder that I keep my files in. Uh, I'll go onto the Tosi drive. I'll select fax list. I'll select the file type as a tab delimited file. And I'll call this M1 Monday. It's going to ask me if I want to replace this file. So just say yes to that. 
Okay. Okay, you can hit no to this one. And close the file, the temporary file that you open. Now you want to go ahead and do this, the same thing for each one of these machines. So this one's going to be like M1-TUES, M1-WEND, and so forth. And the same thing when you hit a machine too, you want to do the same thing. You'll be doing M2-MON and so forth. Having all of these in a top delimited file. If we look at this, I'm just going to open my, um, my U drive. If you look at one of these files, they are just a simple text file, so we can edit it. And each one of the contacts is separated by a tab, and that's how the WinFax uh, phone book will read each one of these records in. Okay, let's go ahead and try to import one of the, on machine one, fax one that is. Let's try to import the first week. So first thing first, I need to get back to that location where I saved it. So in the run menu, I'll type in, I want to go to the file store server, store, dash, hit enter. Now it asks me for a password here, now you can use your local login, so I'm going to use my, my credentials login here. So let's see, ctor1 star, okay, I'm again access to the file system. Select the drive for the folder that you saved in. In my case, I saved it in my folder. And select the fax, fax list folder. Now, I'm going to copy this location because I'm going to need it to, in here to actually import those contacts in. Now, it doesn't matter which folder I select in here. I'm just going to have right and select it and right click and click on import. I want to ask you file at the location. Paste it, Control V, click on the select button, go into the fax list file, open up Monday, click on next. Now in here is actually giving you an option to actually if you want to import the first row as a data. Now the first row is a data row for us, so we will import it. If you had names in here like um, like code and school name and phone number and, and board and things like that, you might not want to import the first row. In that case, you'll click on this, and it's going to ignore the first row. For our case, just make sure this option is selected. Click on Next. We'll map the school name, the company. We'll map the person, first and last name to the first name field. We'll map the fax number to the fax number field. I will map the board name into the CSID field. The CSID field is if the person have um, a digital fax with a LCD, it usually display the fax number. In this case, it's going to display it as it's coming from the TDSP. Select which phone folder you want to have this information open. And that's why it didn't really matter earlier which folder we had selected up here. Select Monday, click Finish. OK. 373 recipient records imported. You can click on Monday to verify this, and there we go. We have all those records imported. Now, the same procedure follow for the rest of the folder. It, again, it doesn't matter which folder you have selected, just right click and um, import the file. S select the file you wish to import. Let's say we want to do Tuesday now for machine one. Click next. Again, we'll do the same thing, the company name, the contact, the fax number, and the CSID, and we put this in Tuesday. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and fill out the rest of them, and um, we'll continue with this in a bit. Okay, we're back. As you'll see, in each one of these folders, I have all the contacts imported in. There's nothing obviously in the base basket. Whenever you, by the way, about the waste basket, whenever you delete something from this folder, it will come into the general uh, phone book waste basket. Uh, that's a good thing to note if by accidentally you delete all the contacts, um, you can always restore it from the waste basket. If you permanently delete something from the waste basket, however, it's gone forever. 
So right now we don't have a cover page and the cover page section in this area is where we'll be putting um, the various promos we'll be faxing out. So I'll go ahead and switch over back to my PC and open Corel Draw. We usually design all promos in Corel Draw and all the promos basically for faxing and regular mail is be designing this program. I'm going to go ahead and also open the fax template that I had created for this section. Okay, under this folder is uh, something called FRG Manufacturing. That's, um, whoops, I should actually go through this with you. File store, template, FRG Manufacturing Materials. Fax of Virginia form. Now we are doing this for our manufacturer, FRG. So. I'll open this file. It was stored in the folder for him. But typically, I'll show you also where generally we keep our uh, all our promos under templates. If you scroll on all the way to the bottom here, there's a folder in here called promos. And our promos start from 1001, and each time we create a new promo, we increment it. And there's a Corel Draw file in there. And most of the folders have a JPEG version of it also that we'll be using for the faxing. Right now, we are up to 1070. So what we want to do now is actually export this file because uh, we cannot use a Corel Draw file to create um, a fax version out of this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to double click on the square and it's going to add superimpose a background in here just to show you that. It's actually All I need to do is double click and it adds a square in the background. I'll call that square white and I'll turn off the outline. So right now there's no outline on it. What I want to do also, I need to add an attention in here. Who is this fax going to? So in here, put ATTN. We'll change this font. We actually highlight this. We'll change this font, a matching font, so Arial Black. And we're gonna put it right at the top here. Let's shrink this down a bit. Okay, so the attention, the person name, gonna go in there. So what we want to do now is export this file as a JPEG. So go file, export. We're going to select the same folder it was, it, this original file came from. So back to templates, back to FRG, I will call it. Fax or Jimmy Inform, that's fine. Hit export. And here we need to make sure the resolution is at least 300. 150 can work fine for some things. But to be on the same side, you get a proper resolution. Make sure the resolution is 300 and the analysis is on. And you mean to the aspect ratio. These are the main settings that have to be checked. OK. OK. OK, we go ahead and close the file. And you'll see if changes to it. Now, we want to move back into our fax server to actually create our cover page now. So resume into the fax server, go to cover pages, right click in the in this pane and click new. You want to create a new cover page now, okay. Now we can use the design wizard or we can actually just give us something that's eight and a half by eleven users without using any tools itself, it's gonna give us a blank template. Now I need to make a copy of the images. Okay. So right now I actually have to browse to where I have the file located. Um, this is a JPEG file I recently exported. So I know it's on a file store, so I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna go on a file store again. There's a folder called templates.
Okay. So now we need to actually browse for the file. So go to start, go to run. Um, type in um, forward slash um, file store or backward slash that is. Go into file store. Go into templates. Go into FRG. That's where we actually place the JPEG. You will want to copy this JPEG from here and put it into the local My Documents folder. Now, reason being, whenever you're sending about 300 faxes, WinFax will actually, for each fax it, it actually um, creates, it will want to go off to the network and retrieve this image. Now, that will consume quite a bit of bandwidth. Now, to actually stop that from happening on the network, make a local copy to the computer so it will speed up the process. In the template pane again, select the image icon. Now you, what you want to do is click on the top left hand corner and drag, drag the box to the size of the fax that you want to be on the template. Now it's going to ask you for the file now, so select the file name, go to My Documents, and open a JPEG that you recently copied over. Click Applied, click OK. Now, it squished everything, so all you need to do is actually just grab the middle anchor point and pull downwards. So you want to do this again, scroll down, pull downwards, scroll down, pull downwards, until you have the facts to the way of your liking. You might want to also pull this down a bit more, so you have extra room at the top here to put the person's name. Now, before we actually save this file, we need to add the, to the recipient who this fax is going to. So we will click on insert recipient. Remember, we import all the information into the first name field. If both the first name and last name, so select first name. Move that in place. What you want to do is select the cursor tool here. And what we're going to do, we're going to remove the word first name itself and just leave the word, the at symbol and the F for first name. You want to extend this. And you want to put this in a similar font. So Arial Black. Bold it is fine, or actually on leave that on bold. Now, this black border, select the border, go to properties. You want to turn off that border. So on the border, say no border, apply. Okay, and it will turn it off. Now usually it's hard to align things in WinFax, so you're not going to get this perfectly straight. So make it as close as possible. Last thing we want to do, make sure you do it, did stretch it out all the way. So in case somebody have a really long name that it's not being truncated, that you have enough room, the entire top of the fax to actually uh, to fit someone's name. So before we finish here, you need to save the file. So hit file, save as. Okay, it will actually, um, the feed is not going to be editable. That's fine. We don't need that. In here, give the fax a name. So let's call it Jim Uniforms. We're going to set this as our default cover page with description again, going to be Jim Uniforms. Oops, GYM. Jim Uniforms. Click on the Save button. Okay, it's been added in the general library. Okay. So in the general library now, let me just minimize this or close this actually. There's a new one highlighted in blue called Jim Uniforms. Now, the moment I go to File, New, I want to do a new, um, wow, where is the toolbar view? Toolbar, okay. So what I want to do is actually send a fax, so I click on the Send button. The Jim Uniform one will be selected by default. Over here, the recipient list will load up. So let me just pull this down and let me show you this. So the phone book that we created earlier have those couple of folders to, um, for the week. So since today is um, Monday, I select Monday and I'll drag and drop this folder into the recipient window. So it's quickly going to add those 370 something contacts in here. And obviously you can do certain things in here now. We can do um, really neat things by selecting all the faxes by pressing Control A while you was in the recipient window. Click on the schedule button. And you can actually set a delivery date whether you want to send it instantly or schedule it for the next day. So you can do something as a, a specific time and day. 
by selecting whichever time you want to start it at on whichever day so say for example you want to set it for the following morning to start at eight o'clock you can type in eight zero 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 a.m and let's set it for um well let's do for example on the third i can hit apply and okay and on that day these set of faxes will be sent out um, once you hit send all of them will be moved into the outbox folder i'm just going to go ahead and close this actually and cancel this event so the outbox folder here all those faxes will appear the sent ones will appear in the sent log folder and that's about it for actually sending a fax